bracket. I can actually commentate for once today. So here we have Dom versus Spargo. You know, this is going to be a very even matchup for both players just because, you know, Richter is all about walling the opponent out, but because of Cloud's disjoint and just this really impressive offstage game, it's going to be really hard for Richter to, you know, set up the wall and keep it perfectly 100% of the time. And all Spargo really needs is just one opening to just kind of Edgar Richter and throw him off stage. As long as Richter can keep up the wall and, wow, cross kills off stage, that is very surprising. It's very rare to see that move kill unless it's like super far off stage like that. Usually it'll take a jump, if that's how it feels, but just straight up feeling like that. I feel like Sardo kind of saw the writing on the wall, maybe realized, okay, yeah, I'm probably not going to make it back. Super aggressive Sardo right here. Here we go, Dom trying to get back to center stage, but just barely makes it back with the up beat. And now here's the ledge trapping phase. And Fargo opting not to press a button there, but you know, just resetting the situation. And there's the blade beam. Red the roll, but doesn't find it and gets down tilted. But that's kind of the bad thing about playing Dalmont is that even when you have a heavy whiff like that, you don't really get a super hard punish because all their best you know, punish options like forward smash that most other characters have is too slow. Ooh, super aggressive down there to up air. Another up air. Trying to go for the fair, and yet it, he's just juggling him over and over again. And you see Dom just trying to find a landing, but can't find it. Ooh, finally release some of their pressure with that up B, but catches the bottle. Ooh, that was a really nice parry. Here we go. Almost getting the jump, not quite. Tried getting the, the, the two frame on the ledge, you know, when you run out of invincibility. Spargo opting to pick a get-up option. That's what you have to do against Belmont is like you have to pick up an option right as... Oh, wow, he went super deep for that kill. Yeah, Spargo definitely wasn't going to make it back from that. At least I'm like 90% sure just because he went super far deep right there. And without limit, even double jump up B probably wouldn't make it back. But even if he had whiffed it, double jump up B might be able to catch uh, Dom's up B. And we know it, you, when you have a stock leak like that, you're at the you're at the the percentage where like yes, I can get the kill, I can steal off the game. You can take it because worst case scenario, you whiff, you still have a fresh stock clean to deal with. Here we go, game two. There's the Belmont oppression, but you no, know, a quick upy relieves them of all that. Yep, chilling the up air, not gonna find another one. There's a quick back air. And then an axe, and you know what? All these projectiles, you know, it's mainly just about controlling space. And when you have a very aerial based character like Cloud, who you know wants to be in the air to set up a fair or a back air, you know, you gotta be able to say, no, I'm gonna throw out the cross, I'm gonna control the space so that he can't get his game plan going. And hopefully he can keep that game plan going long enough so that he just nickels and dimes it to a point where he can eventually get the kill, like, right there. Oh, tried looking for the tech, doesn't find it, but manages to catch the, the option afterwards. Ooh, there's a fair into up and in there. Doesn't quite get the air dodge. Dom, I feel like it's just super explosive with this place. Oh, there's the fire on the ground. There's the cross just in the air. And I feel like that's something that we see Dom do a lot, is that most Belmonts will just throw cross on the ground. But Dom opts to short hop or like maybe even like full hop and then like delay cross just so that he can catch people trying to jump over it and still like catch tall characters on the ground too since it covers both options. Ooh, and then up air quickly snipes out Spargo's stock right there. Spargo trying to even up the stocks as best as he can, but you know what? He has to really make the best of the situation. And Dom really clean with his recovery right there. But all this ledge trapping, and you know what? Spargo is just easily making up this stock percent. 
Ooh, catch. That's one of the really bad things about fire is that sometimes you'll throw it out and as the opponent's dash attacking, and the dash attack will catch the cross, and you just ended up getting in like a worse position too. Just like that, Spargo evening up the stocks. There's a quick up B. And opting to go for down tilt to catch the, the holy fire, you know? That's really surprising because it, it went underneath it, but it also moved him past it just far enough so that he wouldn't be hit by the fire itself. And now he has limit on deck. Dom has to watch out for any misplays at this point. You know, a single cross slash, a single forward tilt might be the end of it. And there's the blade beam, and that will catch the landing. Well, these these matches are going by quick. Oh boy. Here we go, game three. Spargo looking to get into losers finals versus Nico. Quick back air and up air, or down tilt and up air. You know, Spargo's aggression is just pretty much unmatched. And I feel like right now, like with T3 Dom and Spargo probably being like some of the best players of their characters, respectively, it's a really good showcase of seeing like what each one wants to do in neutral and how they're able to deal with pressure and uh, aggression. Uh, we can see T3, he, he wants to set up his wall, but Spargo is almost like three steps ahead of him where he can just read where he wants to be and, you know, just avoid it and get a sneak in a back air. Go. Underestimating the range of the cross. Not going to be able to follow up with that fully fired. Wasn't expecting for him to get caught. And here's the ledge option. Oh, and... Dom just keeps on throwing out all these boy fires and he's never expecting them to connect and so by the time he's like in a position where like yes I can punish it now, Spargo's already DI'd it away. Ooh, and there we go, there was the first time he actually managed to punish it off of the down beat. Ooh, gets a tech chase, not going to be able to follow it up with anything but gets a down tilt to, or down air to nair. Usually you can get a drag down combo off of that there, but you know, Spargo kind of breaking out of it. That that's very much a cloud syndrome where you see the the up end. It's it's a really nice move. It comes out quick. It's a really good anti air. So you gotta be careful about you know, going too hard with it. And the cross into not gonna be able to follow up with anything, and all these nairs. Goes for a back air. I feel like if that had been in there instead, that would have been death. But quick run of four tilt, no air dodge. Or no, yeah, that's it. Yep. He expended his air dodge. He really had no other recourse to do except just eat the there. But Dom evening up the stocks, and we are down to the last stocks of Peach. Ooh, try getting a cross slash, but he's gonna just be able to hop right over it. Both players are playing it super well. There we go. And all these juggles, and I feel like Dom just like can't find a landing. So he ate a good like 40 to 60 percent off of nothing but up air. But at least while he was being comboed by the up air strings, he was wasting time on the the limit. So he didn't have to deal with limit anymore. But. You know what, limit with the buff, all he needs is just a little bit of charge time. Already it's halfway there, and you know what, that's the game. That is a quick 3-0 and a handshake for Spargo. Whoa.